Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I am so excited because I have a very special guest, someone I have been working to coordinate for some time, but I am thrilled to say my special guest today is Richard Thomas. Welcome and thank you so much for agreeing to take time out of your tour to talk with me and to talk with all of the viewers and and we really appreciate it. Well, it's a pleasure. I appreciate it too. I'm great. I'm excited about it. Cool. How's the tour going? It's going great. I'm speaking to you from Omaha, Nebraska, a city and state I've never visited before. We just opened here last night. We're here for a week and it's a great it was a great audience and really terrific and we had a good show and then we're here for a week and we go to Minneapolis for a week and then Appleton, Wisconsin, another town I bet you've never been in. <laughs> and then I don't know, St. Louis and Baltimore and then Florida and Texas. We're all over the place. And we finish in July. But it's going great. Oh, cool. So you're on sort of the two in terms of this overall span of it, you're you're kind of into the final stretch. The, the last final third. third. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like five months to go and it's basically a year and a half to or so. We've been doing it all. We've done, I think this week we will hit 350 performances and uh, it's, it's, it's the road. It's long and it's challenging, but it's also very satisfying. Good. So, so you know all your lines now. <laughs> yeah, I know everybody else's lines too at this point. <laughs> I remember that. For, even from the time I was a kid doing theater, I would very quickly know the entire show. You know? Oh, absolutely. Kids do. They, they're, they're, it, it, it's a thing that if, uh, if uh, you're a child actor and you're in a scene with an adult actor who forgets their lines, you know exactly what they're forgetting. You, and you have to be careful not to say anything because, because then you become like this sort of wise ass kid. And so you like, I know why you're doing this. I know it. I know what the line is that you're not saying, but I don't dare tell you because I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, well, yes, I would pipe up at times <laughs> as a kid. Yeah, sure. Well, I've done it. I did it too. You know, so, yeah, we, we kids learn, you know, they learn all of that stuff. Yeah. So I've heard you talk about this, but um, the viewers haven't necessarily, but the difference between doing film, you know, something that's for television film and theater, and how do you right. see that difference and what's your preference? Well, there are areas in which I don't have a preference, you know, I mean, acting is acting and and the, the, uh, the excitement of working with people that you uh, enjoy being with and that sort of, that, conditional intimacy that you have and the experience of doing it and of course wanting to tell the truth and give the best performance possible all those things are the same and and one is not preferable to the other in that respect a uh, great thing about film is that it's it's like detail work you know it's like um painting cameos you know very small very specific details and there are things that the camera will see as you yourself have pointed out when we've been on panels that, you know, there are things that the camera will see that you cannot see past the third row of, of, uh, of a theater. Um, and also the camera is mysterious in that it allows you to look at the face without knowing maybe what the, what the person is thinking at all, which is a very, it can be very mysterious in that respect. Uh, the, the idea of working in the detailed way over and over take, by take is very fascinating and, and interesting. But I, my preference of the two is always has been theater and always will be, not because I think it's better or more virtuous somehow. I just, I like the experience of it. I love the live, I love playing with an audience. I love doing the play from start to finish. I love getting a response. I love being able to go back night after night and refine it and work on it and check on it and, you know, learn more about it and add something that I haven't, you know, especially when you're doing a long play like this over a long period of time, you know, the, it, I've had many insights about the role over the last few months that I would never have been able to have rehearsing and shooting on a set, doing a scene in one day. Um, and you got to have material that's good enough for that. But when you do, 
it's really an exploratory process. It's very interesting and exciting. And I like, another thing I like about theater is that we all come together in the theater together at the same time in the evening and tell the whole story together. I, I don't know how many times, and I know you've had this experience as many times as I have, you know, you go to the rap party for a show, a movie, you know, or an episode of a series or a series, and you meet people who are in the show who you've never met. Not only not only have you not been in a scene with them, you've never met them, but in, the, in theater, even if they're actors who you don't have a scene with, you get to hear, you get to watch them from the wings or you get to hear their voice and hear how the scene's going so that everybody is actually a part of the whole story all the time. And I, that's, a, that's a thrilling part of it for me. Yeah, you definitely have that sense of community with the whole group. Yes. Um, it can't. Yeah. For us, of course, with the series, you have that because we just sheer amount of time that we I mean, spent. probably more time. I mean, we probably spent more time with each other week to week or as much, certainly, as we did with our own family. Yeah, often more. Yeah. Yeah. So Waltons. Let's go yeah. back to the beginning. <laughs> here you were. You I, now I gotta tell you, I gotta give you a real disclaimer here. Yeah. At my age, uh, you you will probably be reminding me of things that I've gone way out of my head. It happens to me all the time too. So we'll, we're gonna take some broad strokes. <laughs> um, you, that's rem perfect. you remember being cast. <laughs> I remember I remember being, I remember I was in my parents' ballet school on Broadway and I don't know 83rd Street 84th Street getting the call speaking with my agent uh getting the offer uh for the homecoming and uh, I was thrilled with that first phone call because I learned that Pat Patricia Neal was in it and I was very excited about the idea of working with her and then of course you know then they set the script and it was so, fantastic and you know so i remember i remember the phone call actually about the homecoming inviting inviting me to be a part of that so you were living in new york at that point so the connection to playing how did you what did you bring what was i know you have connections to kentucky and so creating this yeah. character. Uh, I mean, I was I was born and raised in LA. So what did I know about being a country kid? I learned it on the show. For you, I think you had some other right. things uh, to pull from. I did, I did, uh, Judy. It was, it was wonderful for me because I spent really the happiest, some of the happiest times of, I mean, I had a pretty happy childhood. So, but but some of the happiest parts of it were spent every summer of my childhood and young early manhood going to visit my grandparents on their farm in eastern Kentucky, which is really out in the country, especially in those days. Now it's a little bit more suburban. It's a little bit more there there are more homes and there's been more the roads are better and all that. But but it was real country and they had a farm and and I just went my parents dropped me off right after school and I stayed there three months and just spent the whole summer there with my cousins and playmates and we had horses and we had, we had all that stuff. And so, uh, and I had the sound of it in my ear too, mm. uh, of the accents and the way people spoke and, and how they expressed themselves. So it was a wonderful opportunity. And really my first opportunity to bring that whole part of my life into the work. Um, and I, I felt so comfortable. I felt like I know, I know who this kid, and because he was an artist, you know, cause, because he was, a bit of an outsider even within that circle uh, from his artistic viewpoint, you know, watching everything and observing everything. Um, I felt like I got the country part of myself that I could bring, but also the artist part of myself, you know, that I could bring because John Boy was that as well. So it was a, it was a terrific opportunity to bring big parts of me to the that were all, that were sort of like in me to the to the role. Do you have any recollection of like first impressions in the homecoming of this gaggle of <laughs> siblings that I you know. were <laughs> handed? <laughs> I do. I just have the best. I have the most wonderful memory. I I remember 
Jackson Hole as being just a wonderful time for all of us. And we weren't even there that long, I don't think. Were we? It was like a week. Very long time. Yeah. Yeah. But it was very special because we were all, and didn't, we got snowed in at one point in the hotel. <laughs> and I think that's when Edgar Bergen came down and did his performance for us. Yeah. With the puppets. But, but uh, I felt by the time we got back together to do the series, all of us kids, I felt so bonded with everybody. All We'd already made a family, you know, and then we did all those scenes at Radford at CBS, right? Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. All those stuff in the barn and all. I, I just, I think we all, I think we got each other very quickly and created a family very quickly. Yeah. I, I had that, that same. It was sense. clear early on too, we were going to do a lot of laughing. <laughs> yeah. Of, there was going to be a lot of laughter involved. There was, yeah. I always adored the relationship between John Boy and Mary Ellen. Those were some of the most fun it, scenes it, for me, the bantering, the teasing, the, you know. And yet there were so many wonderful scenes that were important as well, where we talked about important things oh, for the characters. Oh, definitely. I loved one of it, it, it was such an interesting relationship because they had they they were clearly devoted to one another and and were absolutely totally bonded as siblings but they had that wonderful friction of getting on each other's nerves and sort of contesting each other and and you know and Mary Ellen's assertiveness as a girl was such a wonderful flavor in the show and and the, when the two of them would be at loggerheads or would it, it, I just thought it was great because it wasn't, you know, it's another example of how that show wasn't just all sweet all the time. You know, we had a, we had, uh, there was some salt and pepper there. I, I thought it was really, really good. I, it, it was a very special relationship. Yeah. I always love as I am watching back on episodes to, to talk about them for this channel right scenes will pop up and I'm like oh what fun it'll just make me smile again it's like oh there they go again yeah, <laughs> yeah and you can remember when I, when I and I haven't watched the show for a while but um watching the scene again I remember playing the scene doing the scene but also I can kind of remember what was going on around the camera too you know it will it will trigger memories of the actual work process and being together that day or where we were. And, and then, then there's a whole other chain of memories that are released as a result, you know, um, because it's the scene and the playing, but it's also everything we were doing and everything we were up to and how we were, how our day was going, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, scenes that were shot up in, up in Fraser park, you know, I'll see them and I'll just remember that ride up the five freeway and, you know, staying at that motel in Gorman if we had an overnight and going up and shooting in those beautiful vistas. It was really beautiful up there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I learned a lot working on the show, obviously, and I learned a lot from you and I've talked a bit about how your professionalism and your commitment always to the work and your generosity with your fellow actors, the sense that you were always right there. Uh, you know, you were always right there with me in a scene, whether you were on camera or off camera. And, mm -hmm. you know, those are things that I'm sure impacted all of us as younger performers, that work ethic of supporting and community within uh, right. a cast and stuff like that. So I always really appreciated that, that, that you weren't phoning it in off camera. You weren't like, hey, I got to go do literally take a phone call. So, you know, Dick Chafee, script supervisor is going to read my lines off camera for you. And, you know. That does happen, I think. That, that does happen. I mean, I did guest star stuff on shows when I was younger, where the, after the actor, after the lead the actor had done his part of the scene, he'd leave. And then you were speaking lines to a script supervisor. Uh, well, thank you, first of all, for saying that. My memory of myself in those days is just of kind of being a pain in the ass. Frankly, of being, you know, but you were a lovable would, pain in the ass. <laughs> well, good, okay, good. I never thought you, you were know, a pain in the ass. 
<laughs> well, well, thanks. But, you know, I mean, you know, you've got this part in a series and it's a hit and all those things that happened to us, you know, when we all became celebrities, you know, and and I just thought, oh, Richard. But then I have to remember I was like 21, 22. So I yeah. cut myself a little slack. But I think what you're talking about just comes from the fact that I had already done a lot of work by the time I got there. You know, I had made movies and I had done a lot of theater. And I was, I've been an actress since I was, you know, seven years old, right? My, my actor's equity card will be 65 years old this year um, <laughs> or next year. Who's counting? Um, so I brought, I brought, I was already kind of like knew how to go to work, but also my parents were very important in that because I was raised by ballet dancers um, and I had models at home for how to go to work in the theater and how to be a member of a company, uh, which all dancers do. So, so the, the, the sort of the, um, showing up, if you will, or the, the kind of professionalism or the, just looking at yourself as one actor in a company that all was inculcated in me by my parents as I was watching them work, being a, a child watching the dancers work together and then doing my own work as a kid. So all that went together to sort of create a sort of uh, a, maybe a more disciplined uh, approach, you know, and also always looking at it just as work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the ego stuff is all there when you're having a success, but it's, it's, a, it's your job. It's a, it's a job of work you're going to do. And when you're playing a scene and say you and I are playing a scene, um, it's all focused on just that, the presence of your partner and making it real and true. That's the thrilling part of what we do. And uh, so I was always able to just keep focused on that, on the work aspect of it, mm. you know, you know, yeah. while my ego was being puffed up, like, <laughs> you know, I believe. I mean, we all I, went through it. I, we came out the other yeah, side, I, which is good. We did. We did come out the other side. Here we are. It's true, Judy. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank Richard so much for coming to be a part of this. And I will be back with more of that conversation with Richard very soon. Thanks for watching.